Hey, it's John Buck back again. I'm going to uh, show you today something called the moment generating function is the focus of our video. I think the, uh, the moment generating function is a really cool example of something we originally learned about in one context, the Laplace transform, uh, showing up again in a very different context uh, and, and making our life easier and making things simpler. Uh, so having a, a broader application. So the moment generating function for a continuous, this is for some uh, continuous random variable x, right? And we have a PDF that goes with it that will be f x of x. We define this to be capital M sub X of S is going to be the expected value of this kind of strange looking thing at first, e to the S X. And again, I should just call attention to the fact this subscript here is the name of the random variable. So when the moment generating function has a subscript, that tells me the name of the random variable. S is the independent variable for it. And if we just write out the definition of this, we'd say, well, that would be the integral from minus infinity to infinity. The expected value of any function is e to the s lowercase x of the outcome times the PDF, right? This is just the fundamental theorem of expectation showing up again. If I want to find the expected value of any function g of x, I plug it in here and then weight it by the PDF and integrate it. But if I pause for a moment, step out of my probability hat, and look at that with my linear systems hat, I say that's basically the Laplace transform except for one little detail. So this thing here is almost the Laplace transform of the PDF. Right? If I'm going to take the, PD, the PDF, instead of thinking of the expected value of this, I could also think of taking the Laplace transform of the PDF. The only thing that's missing is, there's, is that it's not a minus sign in the exponent. So I'll sort of make that as a, a warning sign here, like a, a street sign with a tricky road. Right? The only change is the sign of the exponent. Right? At least as electrical engineers, our Laplace transform, we generally use e to the minus sx. Right, so in a in an e, e sort of way, this is like a sign change away from the Laplace transform, but many of the basic ideas are still just going to work. And there's actually turns out to be a couple of, of, of very good ac uh, applications of this. So whoop, I need to need to put my blank new page in there. All right. So for if I want to look at applications of the moment generating function. The first one is sort of not a surprise based on its name is it turns out it's very we can compute the moments. So if I know the moment generating function I'll show in a second you'll be able to find any moment of the function from that without having to do another integral. The second thing relates to the, uh, the video which I just did a little while ago. It also is very helpful. We can multiply moment generating functions to get the MGF for a sum of independent random variables. Probably would have been better to say that in the other order, I realize now. But when I take two independent random variables and add them, we saw in the pre, uh, one of my earlier videos that what we're doing is convolving their PDFs. Well, if I'm convolving the PDF, then I am multiplying the Fourier transforms or Laplace transforms, and that turns out that carries over to the moment generating function. So there are times that if I want to add or perhaps average a bunch of random variables, I can think of that as, as multiplying their moment generating functions and then taking, finding the result of that product and then taking an inverse function from there. So how do we, that, that one, I'm not going to show, uh, show that in detail, that's sort of direct from the definitions. 
and things like that. But there are times that that makes it easier. But let's see now how do we compute moments and how that works. So how do we compute moments from the MGF? And the key to that is using the Taylor series for that exponential. Right, that if I have e to the sx, that's equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial sx to the n. So if I go back to the previous page and plug that in inside that expected value, right, then I can say, using, using that Taylor series, I can say that the moment generating function of x as a function of s is going to be that integral, but now I'm going to replace e to the sx with this sum. So I get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, s, x, the whole quantity to the n, times the PDF of x. And now we use our standard technique. If you're not sure what to do with a big, messy equation like this, change the order of the sum and the integral. It's a sort of standard electrical engineering problem-solving technique. If things look messy, see if it looks any better if you switch the order of integrals or integrals and sums around and see if it, it gets any better. So I can say, well, if I'm going to bring the integral inside, all the things that don't depend on x can come outside. So I have the n factorial here. I can think of this as s to the n coming out here. And then I'm going to, to, to write this in, in color just to set it off in a minute. What's left is an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x to the n f of x dx. Right? But now this whole piece here, that's just the definition of the nth moment. Right? So I can take that and replace it inside my sum. I can say the moment generating function, I may have originally saw it as a sort of you know, almost Laplace transform. Oh, let's go back to, to white here. As the almost Laplace transform, but what I've just shown now is it's equivalent to saying the moment generating function is also this infinite sum of 1 over n factorial s to the n times the nth moment of x. Which, if I want to write that out term by term, right, I say, well, when n equals 0, 0 factorial is 1, s to the 0 is 1, e to that is 1, so I get 1 plus, oops, still wrong color. I get 1, when n equals 1, I get 1 plus s e to the x, so I get s times e to the x plus s squared times the expected value of x squared plus s cubed times whoop, over 2 over 3 factorial of x cubed and so on. So how that helps me is say, well, what happens when I start taking derivatives of this thing with respect to s? We've said whatever this function is, it's equivalent to this infinite series. But what happens if I take a derivative with respect to s here of mg of x? So I can now come, come back and say, actually, let's just let's start a new page for this. If I take the... Uh, derivative with respect to s of the moment generating function, that 1 will go away, so I'll get a 0. The derivative with respect to s leaves me with the expected value of x. Plus I'll have, let's see, the s squared will become 2s, the 2's cancel, and that previous term I'll have s x squared and other terms. So if I now take this derivative, the result of taking this derivative and I evaluate the derivative at s equals 0, all these higher order terms have s in them and vanish, and I get the mean. So knowing the moment generating function, I take one derivative and plug in s equals 0 to get the mean. Similarly, if I took another derivative with respect to s, if I did the second derivative, 
and then after, only after the second derivative set s equal to zero. Well, the derivative, taking another derivative with respect to s will remove this. I'll have expected value of x squared plus other terms that involve s like that, and so uh, these will all go away. And these were all zero here. So the second derivative and, and, and evaluated at s equals zero will give me the second moment. And in fact, we can, it's not hard to show more generally, I can find any moment. If I take the kth derivative of the moment generating function and set s equal to zero, I find the expected value of x to the k. So I can find the kth moment from that. So that's an important thing to point out, right, the, uh, which is that the, uh, right, the moment generating function tells me all of the derivatives, all of the moments, I should say. I'm sorry. The moment generating function tells me all the moments of the PDF. So if you think about what that means, I say if, I, if I were going to find a many moments, I'd need to normally, doing it the direct way, I'd have to find many integrals. So instead what I have here is one integral, which is this, you know, sort of a Laplace, basically a Laplace transform with a, a change of sign and then many derivatives and plugging in. Right, so if I want to find three moments, I'd need to do three derivatives. That's much better than the direct method. Right, I'd have to find, to find the moments, I'd have to find n integrals to get n moments. Okay, so basically if I'm going to need to find a lot of moments, finding the moment generating function is an efficient way to go about it. I can find n different moments from just doing n derivatives and evaluating at s equals zero instead of having to do n different integrals. Okay, so that's a, uh, you know, because otherwise I'd have to do the integral of x times f of x, x squared, f of x, and so on. And all the more so if I need like high moments, I don't really care about the low ones in, in some problems. I could do this directly. Another uh, sort of interesting con con ah, interesting consequence of this is that, uh, sort of less obvious but important, if I know all the moments, so Again, it has to be all the infinite sum of moments of a PDF. I can write the moment generating function and in theory use an inverse Laplace transform with the sign change. find the PDF. So if I have an unknown PDF, but for some reason I do know all the moments, it turns out I can actually work backwards to find the PDF from the moments. Okay, so that's the basic definition of the moment generating function. It's like the Laplace transform of the PDF. The advantage is, first one is I can directly get many moments from it by just taking derivatives once I have it. Second one is it's also helpful at times to multiply moment generating functions can be easier than convolving PDF sometimes. Okay, uh, I'll stop here for this video, and then I'll record another video with an example of computing the moment generating function of a Gaussian. Thanks.